Hello, hello. Hey, everyone. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hey, guys, how are you? Good, good. All right, sorry for a short delay. Having multiple Zoom accounts is not the, the easiest thing to do. <laughs> Why do you have multiple Zoom accounts? <laughs> because there are just too many Zoom calls. Oh. Sometimes they, they happen at the same time. Ah, wow. So you secretly participating in all the calls at the same time. <laughs> yeah, double booking is a, is a real thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, well, thanks everyone for jumping in. Um, lots of people today and I would like to kick off the first item on the agenda and um, kind of like give an overview of the work that we've done with epidemiologists and what what we did we basically took a list of um, infectious disease epidemiologists from LinkedIn and we had them qualified by different um, use cases I haven't updated the, the status for each. But let me share my screen. Um, so what we've done, we identified three, um, well, two, the three use cases here. And that's the ones that uh, me and Serge outlined in the, the pitch deck. And basically we went through the list and categorized um, where each epidemiologist fits, whether he's from university or working at the, at the agency and what kind of uh, use cases they are fitting into. So what I've done, I've actually went through a list of 20 and I have to update the status and I sent them a LinkedIn message with the uh, draft messaging that we've done. So haven't got uh, responses yet. Um, if we don't get uh, responses from this first uh, batch of 20 people, I'm going to change the messaging and try to send them actual emails versus LinkedIn uh, messages, and we'll go from there. So I just started doing that uh, two days ago, so probably we'll have an update in, in a couple of days. All right, so quick update on that. Uh, the next item is actually organizing a couple of calls with epidemiology people by Serge and Maya. Um, not sure if you guys had a chance to reach out to your network. But yes, us... uh, I have a chance and uh, I would like to review that uh, email that you're sending to them in LinkedIn. Maybe I can also send, I have a vast network of happy people, even though not just those I know, but people who I just connected with. So, um, yeah, so you could share the, your the messaging map. is here on Trello board. If you go into uh, create a draft message, you can check out the the message. Fantastic. Yeah, the subject and message. Um, obviously, if you're sending it from your from your own account, just change the name and uh, feel free to to actually copy and create multiple versions of this, um, so we can. You know, all of us can can try to to send messages to this list of of people. And by I the way, will change this message. That's that's not that's not the message is gonna work. I'm sorry. And <laughs> you know, I, I have just seen this. Great. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, it's a little bit. It's it's cool. It, it's very efficient. It's like Zen mind. This is what we need. But you have to attract them by saying that we are fighting coronavirus and you know, let's do something good. AI is not something they might understand even that abbreviation. I mean, they, they do, but I'm not sure that all of them get it. So, um, yeah. Okay. That's going to be my task now to change that and potentially also send it okay. to my folks and, uh, the guys from you, this list. Are you here on Trello? Let me add you to this card real quick. Um, I have multiple Trello accounts as well. So do you, Okay, just well, let me try to make to sure your email and okay. that works. I just invited you and let me know if if you have access now. Should have access to the board and I added you to the Trello card. Okay. I'll I'll text you back once awesome. I have it. All right. And you can also explore the actual list of epidemiologists. Yep. Um, in here. Okay. Sounds good. 
Uh, the second uh, point, and yeah, we don't have Maya here on a call, but maybe we'll get an update uh, from her after this call. Uh, then making sure we have uh, very specific use cases, uh, Andre and Serge. And um, yeah, Matan, um, I, I'll send a link to Trello board in here too, just in case anyone needs it. So in terms of having very specific use cases, we have that document that Nicole started and I would love to, to kind of have a use search go through it and maybe just like spitball and outline uh, very specific use cases based on what you heard from Andre um, in terms okay. of meeting like hydroxychloroquine queries and, and others so that it would be easier for you on uh, Nicole and Kyla who are our UI UX people to prepare the mockups of very specific user journeys so we can show it back to Andre and other epidemiologists so they can actually understand it instead of showing them uh, kind of like mock-ups of black and white uh, flows that have general, like here's a medical term or here's something. We tell them, here's where you input hydroxychloroquine. Here's where you see, um, you know, uh, a list of related terms that are uh, hydroxychloroquine sulfate or, or something and other stuff. So basically building out a more like high fidelity mockups in terms of the content, not the, the actual design. Yep. Cool. Do you want me to open up that? Uh... Actually, let's, let's do that. Um, let's... Oh, or you want me to do it separately, not in the call? Uh, yeah, maybe it will be more efficient for you to, to take yeah. whenever you have time. And yeah, I'll... okay sent over the document just to quickly okay. um, give a, a snippet in of what this document outlines. Uh, it's basically um, an aggregate of all the feedback that we've been receiving and uh, just a format of use case actor and the flow. And um, here you can see that Nicole um, filled out some of the like details, how it would look like. Um, not okay. sure if we took one that Andre outlined, let's see. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> what are the characteristics of hydroxychloroquine patients who had heart rhythm problems? So basically um, outlining specifically what, like what has to be typed in, into where, and providing more detail. Okay. Cool, so please do that once you have uh, some time. And the next point is progress with UI UX for literature review tool and update from Nicole, Yohan, Kyla, and Tyler. I think Tyler wasn't able to join, but Nicole, Yohan. Yeah, so for the past two weeks, I think what Nicole and I did was basically just translating the notes into the use case documents you just showed us and also on Mario boards. And I do feel like before I update the wildframes on Figma, we need to have a discussion on like what specific features are we like integrating. So having that kind of discussion would be nice. So a quick question. Um, have you guys had a chance to watch that uh, latest call with um, Andre and the one that Mat Matan um, uh, kind of like? Yeah. Describe. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. So um, maybe we, we we can take that one and kind of just like update the current version of mockups to fit more uh -huh. of what he was doing. Obviously, it's a super complex flow, and uh, maybe we need to have a separate like thirty minute call. Uh, me, you, Serge, um, and and just go through it step by step. If uh -huh. that would be helpful for you guys. I think yeah, that would be. Uh -huh. Well, I do want to ask, like, um, I don't, was, did Andre ever do some type, some type of demo with a M face? Because I, something that kind of stood he out haven't. to me. Yeah. And my concern, uh, oh, his concern was uh, that it's, like, since it's a paid tool, not, not sure if he's able to do that publicly. Right. But let's, um, let's reach out to him after this call and ask for um, the walkthrough. Okay. By the way, sir, do you have Embase by any chance? I'm sorry, what the question is? Do I have do what? Do you have Embase? 
that Elsevier um, research tool. Database. It's a paid product, right? Yes, it's... No, um, I don't have access to it. Is it expensive? Actually, I have no idea. So it's... Uh, I was asking uh, Andre about this one. Uh, I, I do have. I have it. Oh, okay. oh wow. So that, you, are, you are talking about Elsevier account, right? Yes, I do. Yes. Awesome. So maybe actually um, we can we can schedule that call and kind of um, go through how you use it and uh, for your specific um, area of research, which um, is lung diseases, right? Uh, no, uh, actually, I'm from the cancer biology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, how about, let's see, uh, can you guys do maybe Monday? Monday, how about noon Pacific? What, what exactly need to be done? Uh, just to um, share the screen of how you currently use the tool so that our UX people, uh, okay. UI UX people can better understand how researchers use these tools okay. to create a, a better version of, of those. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, not Monday, maybe Tuesday sometime. That Tuesday, is how about Tuesday 1 Pacific? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yuan, Nicole, would, would you be able to join? Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah. I'm going to send an invite right yes. after the call. Okay, cool. Well, this is great. Thanks, Sequinder, for joining this call. Uh, yeah, I, it would be great to do that because um, I think one thing that kind of stood out to me in that call with Andre and uh, Satoshi was that Andre noted that Embase was more complex than PubMed. Um, at first, I thought that was a bad thing, but it, later on, he kind of explained it more. He, it seems like he prefers Embase more specifically um, in cases where he needs to be very specific in searching papers because I think he said that Embase has more filters and options to narrow his search. So, so I would like to see more of um, how the work, how the workflow is um, for you know the things like data extraction and searching for these articles um, in Embase because um, every epidemiologists and researchers will have their own different workflows and their own different tools for searching these articles and data extraction. So yeah, it would be great to have more of these demos. So um, what you guys are working on, so. So can I add a point? So normally what happens that uh, the biggest search engine we use is PubMed. So, and then PubMed lead us to whether we need to go to Alzheimer or we have to go to other, other other things. So because PubMed, act as, it's a public library, the medicine group library, and mm -hmm. it is the one which has the most latest and the, it is updated on a daily basis. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. Interesting insight. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Uh, well, we'll work on that. We'll get a little bit more exposure to different tools. And um, the next point, I wanted to kind of like give uh, a, a word to Matan, who um, is is more is coming from a like operations background, and he uh, watched that uh, video call with Andre and created a document. And I wanted to kind of like uh, give him a moment to speak about the insights and maybe like some um, some thought process when it comes to um, the the overall um, interactions that he observed. Hey guys, um, to be frank, I probably have to review it again. I've got so much in my head right now. Um, I'm at the point, I'm really just trying to understand, um, uh, like the people before me were talking about the process uh, that uh, the end users are going through uh, and understand the challenges that, that they have um, obviously, you know, the, the goal from an operations point of view is to put your, yourself in the shoes of the end user, understand um, uh, the client, um, uh, and sort of empathize with them as much as you can uh, to understand where you need to go. So my goal is to, is, is to understand where we are right now with everything, which is highly complex, um, and then get a better understanding of, of where we need to go. Um, and so, so uh, what I tried to outline here, um, it's you know just taking some notes from uh, that Arthur had already put together, uh, and then some other things that um, uh, you know that came up in the call. 
to understand um, what features uh, the the um, uh, the dashboard needs to have. So, um, you know, w when you're when you're looking at a problem, uh, one way to approach it is to uh, first ask yourself and figure out where you want to end up, right? What's what's the end goal? Um, and then you sort of break that down into its constituent elements and approach them one at a time. So um, that's kind of my thought process here. Um, sort of, so these are some things that we want to, to be able to do or have in the dashboard. Um, and the thinking is, you know, we approach some of these things and obviously this is, this is quite kind of like just a data dump, quick and dirty. Um, so certainly there can be a lot of refinement uh, and there should be. Um, so uh, the idea was to get something started um, and I don't know if we want to work off of this or, or bring us someplace else, but um, eventually get this, get a document that says, okay, this is the end result that we want. And then we can start to break them down into their constituent elements and, uh, and start the journey. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. And again, thanks a lot for putting this together. Um, the, to, to double down on kind of like this end result, I've actually had a chance to uh, organize a call and organize a Slack channel with a group of University uh, of Edinburgh researchers, uh, which are also British Medical Journal um, editors. And I learned that they have these, uh, this initiative called um, Camarades, and what they're doing, they're actually manually uh, creating that end result, uh, manually creating, uh, hold on, let me click into the right tab. Um, they're manually um, annotating the papers, and as you can see, they've already done uh, 5,000 uh, publications and 1,000 that are primary research publications. And um, one of the kind of the, the goals that we're thinking of helping them is uh, obviously reducing this 89% uh, of uh, not annotated papers. But basically what they're doing, they're manually creating those results, those literature reviews by um, going through each paper, extracting the sample size, extracting the study type, uh, categorizing whether it's clinical trial or not, and all of these things that we're um, actually tackling uh, through machine learning. So in a way, we're, we're kind of like, we have a perfect group of people that can help us uh, bridge the gap between, um, you know, the, the current machine learning extractions and the uh, human in the loop process to accomplish exactly this, kind of like the, the breakdown of specific fields and specific things that Andre and, and epidemiologists like, like him are looking for from this end result. Yeah, so um, obviously super complex manner. And um, if, if someone on the, on the call here is uh, willing to join the, the call with uh, these uh, researchers that are doing this manually, I would love to get some, some more help in terms of uh, figuring out the process and the workflow, how we can collaborate with them. And maybe Matan, you, you'll be able to join that call. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say. Sure. Um... Awesome. I actually just want to add one more um, suggestion. Um, like for Matan's work, uh, it was excellent that you take the notes, but um, maybe it would be better if we can just put all our notes in one place. Like for example, I think Nico and I have been doing similar work on the Miro boards. Uh, can I just share the screen here? Yeah, go ahead. I think it's disabled. Uh, let me see. Try now. So yeah, um, Nicole and I have been doing some similar uh, work on like- oh, that's a awesome. Case of what Andrew did. So yeah, it will be very nice that if we can put together on my boards or something so that we don't repetitive work that's the ux research uh yeah link right okay yeah. so it's also in trello in resources so we can um drive more people towards this document uh, do you want to go through this latest one uh kind of real quick just to understand 
Yeah, um, I think we're just like doing the workflow of Andre, how the first step was how he defined the research of building the query and the later one, how he um, do the extraction of data. And to summing up the points of what we learned from the workflow as other said, and here are some like side notes on the possible features that was brought up in the discussion. For example, we're talking about this possible feature of going to a central place to see other researchers spinning compressed queries. Mm -hmm. And like a recommendation system where you, for example, type in the first entry term and in the second one instead of giving you a blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so that's basically the that mesh uh, uh, kind of ontology and a tree that uh, that showcases relevant terms based on what you're typing in. Yeah. Um. So in terms of the UI UX work blog progress, um, I just think that um before I dive full in into updating them into the wild frames, it'll be nice that we can confirm that what kind of features do we want to integrate and yeah yeah i did a little bit of for example adding the add and like the add and or options or like um adding the term trees as a process of expanding the search but i just feel like i need we need to have some more discussion yeah so hopefully uh, Serge and Andre will be able to, um, to help us with that use case document this week. And, um, and that will basically define more specific use cases with more specific uh, kind of things for you to put into that mockup. I think that that's an actionable goal. What do you think, Serge? Absolutely, yes, yeah, that, that's great. Awesome. I'll get to it this weekend, so. Great. And um, kind of the, the last uh, point on the agenda is just discussing the roadmap and finding a volunteer to help us with Trello board management. Um, not sure if anyone on the call wants to take that, uh, you know, tricky endeavor to, uh, to be the person responsible for just pushing things into Trello or uh, making sure that things are moving from, from to do to done. But if you're listening to this call or if you are on this call and you feel that that's something you are willing to do and to help us, please let us know. Um, uh, hi, uh, Arthur, uh, I'm not, I don't think I can do the Trello board. I'm not so good with that, but I just wanted to say that uh, you know, like that interface that I'm building for the spike protein uh, that should hopefully be deployed today. And uh, I would be interested in like the design and uh, for the, you know, this project for the, this new interface. Uh, sorry, I joined a bit late, but that's what I want. Awesome. Yeah, you're, feel free to, uh, to you're in the channel, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, so we have all the links to Trello. It has the, the links to the UX research plan to Figma and all other uh, places where we're storing the current version of design, uh, feel free to jump in. And I can also invite you to that call with Sequinder on Tuesday, if you want. Yeah, what time Tuesday would it be? It, we just discussed it at being Tuesday, one Pacific. Um, yeah, that should work. Awesome. I'll add you to that too. Great. Um, yeah, so maybe uh, we still have some time left. Um, does anyone have any questions or kind of uh, feeling lost where they can contribute? Um, I mean, there's, there's plenty of areas to contribute from um, kind of helping us with reaching out to, uh, to epidemiologists, to structuring the, the knowledge information, to help with designing. And also if you're a data scientist, there is a lot of work that is happening in the separate channel, which is called Team Literature Review NLP. And we've just had a very productive um, call uh, two days ago, I believe, 
to kind of outline all the all the process with uh, what happens to Core 19 from the very beginning um, in terms of like we we get the the Core 19 there is um, kind of the input then we process it and we output all the kinds of uh, size spacey and other vectors then there is some other magic happening some other magic happening and then boom the end result um, the proof of concept that Mike Honey um, uh, has created by the way he's just sent over an updated version of it that has uh, 60,000 papers and it's you know very slow but it has way more data uh, way more historical data and you can play around with it uh, he also added the second bar to be able to query multiple terms and yeah just great work on, on his front All right, does anyone have any questions? All right, then I think we're good. There's plenty of stuff to, um, to start cranking out and I'll schedule the, the call with um, Nicole, Yuan, uh, Sid and Sequinder and um, we'll work with Serge on messaging to epidemiology people will work on more specific use cases um, for you on and Nicole and uh, Kyla if if she um, will be able to help us, uh, us and yeah sounds like a plan all right sounds good guys thanks everyone for for the call today and um, looking forward to to connect next week thank you thanks everyone bye bye thanks bye.